Ironically, it is incredibly warm today. Like I'm sitting here in swimming trunks, the window is open, it is summer. SUMMER! Sweltering. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stage of YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And earlier today, literally this afternoon, I went to go and see Frozen the Musical at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane in the West End for the very first time. I know! It's been here for months and I see everything. Literally everything. And for some reason, I have just not got around to seeing Frozen yet, and I'll explain a little bit of the backstory as to why. So most of the time, at the moment, I have very little free time to go out and pick a show I want to see because my theatre trips are dictated by the shows that are opening, and I get press invites to go and review the show on opening night. So what happened when Frozen opened last year, I wasn't going to as many press events, maybe I wasn't as big of a fish, and I was on the wait list for press night tickets but didn't actually end up getting any, which is absolutely fine, like, who am I? I'm nobody, and I'm still, like, pinching myself every time I do get press night tickets. But basically, that had been my plan to see the show, and that had fallen through, so I then didn't make plans to see the show very quickly. And I'd always said to myself that when I went to go and see Frozen, I would use the Disney Day Ticket Scheme, which is something that Disney do on their website. You can go and look it up. Maybe I'll pop a link down below. Maybe I won't, because I don't want you to get tickets. I'm unpredictable like that. Who knows? But you can Google it, and this is something that Disney do, and they used to do it on the day of performances, and they now do it at the beginning of the week. And it's been very hard for me to plan a week in advance where I'm going to be, because my life, if you don't know me personally, is hectic, and I have very little availability to actually go out and pick a show I want to go and see for myself. But my lovely friend Daz, of all the dazzles, go and follow him on Twitter, on Instagram, go and check out his website for amazing theatre reviews. He got a pair of tickets for the Sunday matinee this week of Frozen, amazing seats in the stalls, I think £25 each for the middle of row H at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, insane value for money. And so I was like, sure, even though it is my eighth show of the week, in seven days, I will come and see Frozen, because I was really excited to see it. So, in today's video, I'm going to be letting you know all about Frozen and telling you if it lived up to the hype and the really gigantic expectations that have been established for it. So the way that this show has moved into Drury Lane, it is such a production with the set, with the gift shop, with the renovations to the theatre. This whole production is huge and incredible, and it would be very easy to just give it five stars based on spectacle. However, I'm going to knock one of those off for reasons that I will explain throughout this video. This is, for me, a four-star show. A very, very good four-star show, but a four-star show. And the first act I didn't have any problems with. I really enjoyed the more extended version of the prologue with the two young actresses playing Anna and Elsa. I really loved some of the ways that they had kind of adapted the original film source material. I'm curious, people who know the stage version of Frozen better than I do, whether some of the mum's material has been changed since the release of Frozen 2 because it kind of seems to sort of side-eye reference some of the revelations that come in that film. I know, I think Frozen 2 came out in between Broadway Frozen and West End Frozen, but the whole way that was done and the time that was taken over it I thought was great. I mean, they are padding for time in a lot of the first act because they want to end the first act with Let It Go, which when it happens, you absolutely understand why. The consequence of this is the second act does not have a lot of songs from the film, and not that I dislike the songs from the show, but the pacing seems to vary wildly. There are moments that I want to be longer and want to extend that are rushed straight through, and there are moments that I think should be a lot faster that seem to get dragged out. I do mourn the loss of, for the first time in forever, Reprise, and I'm not a huge fan of the song that's replaced it, I Can't Lose You. It's a lovely song, and some of the things they get to articulate are very important. I think maybe had a bigger scene gone into it to explain how they've arrived at that kind of a discussion, I don't know, it seems to come slightly out of nowhere, but it does get a lot more into the psyche of those characters than for the first time in Forever Reprise, which is just like, it'll be fine, no it won't, but it'll be fine, but it won't. At the same time, then having a very deep, very meaningful, I can't lose you, please get out of my ice castle, it needs more of an explanation as to how those two things can be juxtaposed. Then you have Fixer Upper, which they've made the decision not to make them trolls on stage, which I understand. Instead, they look more like troll dolls, and they are like people of the mountain, whatever it is that they call them. And my only issue here is that I just don't like this arrangement of Fixer Upper. It is so much more dynamic on the film soundtrack. I just don't like the beat of it. Oh my god, how did I forget about Huga? We're going back. Huga. What was Huga? Someone explain Huga to me. Now, people have been telling me, you're not ready for this moment at the start of Act 2, and... I was not. I'm all for a Disney show, a family show, 
having elements that will sort of wink and nod to the parents in the audience that will go over the heads of the children. But this was just not actual nudity, but pretend winky nod to nudity, where they're all like wearing nude bodysuits like it's the first episode of RuPaul's Drag Race season seven and covering each other up with branches with leaves on like it's the first chapter of um, the Old Testament. Also, please don't at me if that's not the first chapter of the Old Testament. I've not, it's been a very long time since I've read the Old Testament. Literally nothing stagey happens in the Old Testament. So yeah, that was strange. And the fact that they did it in front of like a show busy cloth, it made such a moment of it. They're like, look, nudity. It was the whole end of the number and there was such a focus on it. It was bizarre. And he kept mentioning it in the lyrics as like, look, nakedness. I, I just wasn't expecting naturism in the second act of Frozen the Musical. I just didn't see it coming. Going back to where we were, when you have Anna having returned to the castle and the whole scene with hands. If you have managed to avoid frozen spoilers up to this point in your life, you're gonna to wanna to skip the next section. Also, how the hell have you done that? Do you live in a cave? Is a frozen cave? In which case, ironically, you'd, you'd, you know, you'd really enjoy this film. Lots to empathize with. But you have the scene where Oliver Ormson as Hans gives the whole, if only there was someone who loved you, which is so, so rushed. Cause he comes and he's like, oh, what happened? Are you okay? You need a kiss? If only there was someone who loved you, bam. And it was just like, we all know it's coming. Spend a little bit more time on it. And it was just, it was just rushed. And then she's left and you so want her to sing a song. And this is where true love used to be. And it's been cut. And that was kind of devastating. And then you have the staging of the whole end sequence, which is a mess. It's worth saying, I loved most of Michael Grandage's direction throughout in terms of like it's a beast of a show to have to deal with with these set pieces with these changing locations and with it being a disney movie where so much of it is prescribed for you and you can only delve so deep into some of these characters you have a specific set of outcomes that you have to achieve and you have a specific tick list of things that you have to do on your way there so for a director i'm sure it's very limiting working on a disney show as a counterpoint to that I'm sure it is also extremely lucrative. <laughs> but I didn't do most of the direction throughout until we get to songs like Monster, where it sort of just starts and she walks on in some frozen trousers, sings a song, and then at the end, she just stands there and they're just like, okay, now we get it. It felt like a no-fly show at Wicked, more so than anything else. And then the whole end sequence with Calder by the Minute was messily staged. Everyone's just walking around in a circle and wearing robes, and there's a sort of a snowy chorus there for the first time that haven't existed for the rest of the show, and it starts to feel like the Arctic version of The Lion King. Which again, if they want to do that, that's fine, but you have to keep it the same throughout. There needs to be some sense of continuity as to that's how you're telling this story. It's like we got to the last scene and the whole means of storytelling suddenly changed. So for those reasons, it dropped it down to a four. I think the show really peaks with Let It Go and then nothing in the second act is able to quite compete with that. So as I've been mentioning, Let It Go is an absolute highlight. There's a real excitement in the theater when it starts, obviously. There are a couple of false starts. There are moments where you think she's gonna sing it and they're like, no, we're gonna give you something else first. We're gonna delay. You're not ready for Let It Go yet. We're gonna withhold it till you're really desperate for it and then bam, let it go. But she comes out, she does the thing. They pepper you with like these little sprinklings of magic. They're like, oh, you wanna tease? Give them a glove, literally, like it flies into the wings. Again, if you don't want spoilers on how this is done, look away, come back to me in the next section. But it is really magic. It gives you the glove and then it gives you the cape and everything just builds slightly. She's doing magic over here projections over there, a little bit more, a little bit more. It's just building and building and building. They drop in one of those transparent curtains, which for some reason just reminds me of going to the theater in childhood. I love a transparent curtain when it comes down and you can kind of half see what's behind it and they like project onto it. That for me is magical. That goes up, we have an ice palace and then the dress reveal. I mean, the floor is so flooded with smoke it's not like you have to really question how it's done. It's not blowing my mind, but it's so snappy that it is thrilling. And I fully need the empty seat in front of me and substantially injured myself. Because also after the dress reveal, Samantha Barks options up on that perfect girl is gone. I kind of remember what it was because I was having an out of body experience at the time, but it was great. So let it go. Far and away the best moment in the show. Like there is no competition. Because I'm weird, I also really enjoyed in What Do You Know About Love when this bridge came on and I'm not gonna tell you what happens with the bridge because I want you to go and find out for yourself. But people who've seen the bridge, you'll know exactly why I was shook because essentially the bridge came on and I was like, wow. That's what happened. Samantha Vox. Fantastic as Elsa, serving you vocals in Monster and Let It Go, optioning up, 
giving you just amazing placement. I was struck by how similar she is to Adina Menzel and yet has her own complete voice and style, but just really effective vocalist, really enjoyed her in the role. She's quite restricted because she doesn't get to do much emotively for such a long time. I think Elsa in the film is only able to really be expressive because she has those giant Pixar eyes, but because she's doing her whole conceal, don't feel, don't tell them you're a lesbian ice queen thing. Who said that? She can't really express much. She's like very cold <laughs> and then has a little magical anxiety attack moment and gets to do substantially more in the second act. But again, she spends such a chunk of the show trying to limit her own emotions, it doesn't give you much to play with as an actor. At this performance, Sarah O'Connor was playing Anna, which is really exciting. I've never actually seen Sarah O'Connor in a principal role before, and she was just lovely, just wonderful. She has a Disney face, again, large expressive eyes. The voice was perfect, the characterizations were perfect. What I love about Anna as a character is that she gets to be so goofy, and just with her physicality and with her little comedic vocalization, really funny, really engaging, really endearing. It just really spoke to all of the kids in the auditorium. And I really enjoyed her in this role. Could not fault Sarah O'Connor as Anna. Also really enjoyed Craig Gallivan as Olaf. And I think he is probably the one whose job is the most prescribed before he even starts. Like in terms of what he has to do with that character, you're meant to look at the puppet anyway. He's still very expressive in how he does it and you still see him as a performer, Avenue Q style. But the voice has to sound a certain way and many of the line readings have to be a certain way. So again, he is slightly limited in what he can do and how much originality he can bring to it. What was really cool was seeing how he did vary it and how he did bring his own style and his own performance and his own interpretation to it within those confines. And I really enjoyed that. Excellent comedic timing, lovely character voice, very endearing. And I'm gonna add two more people to this as well. Richard Frame as Weaselton slash Wesselton. Choose your own adventure, pronounce how you want, I don't even mind. I'm honestly still traumatized by the hundreds of people who told me I've been pronouncing Streisand wrong. Streisand, which I, oh, I just did it again. Streisand, Streisand. Wesselton, one and the same. He was excellent. Again, physicality, characterization, voice, little veins popping out of his head. Excellent, faultless, 10 out of 10, no notes. And Ashley Birchall as Sven. Now the reaction that all the kids had when Olaf came out, I'm pretty sure that's how I reacted when Sven came out. I found that just thrilling. Lovely performance as Sven. And my favorite part was Olaf throwing the hat away into the wings. It doesn't quite make it. It lands at the edge of the stage. So Sven in character looks at the hat and then takes a hoof and just yeets it sideways. So it goes further into the wing. Exceptional stage work. So this was my second time going to the newly renovated and stunningly beautiful Theatre Royal Drury Lane. I had been there for the Bonnie and Clyde concert earlier this year, which was very, very busy and very, very rushed. So it was nice to be able to just kind of stroll around and see more of the venue. It's absolutely beautiful on the inside, that dress circle level with the stairs going up and the balconies in the middle and the lovely restaurant with the balcony outside and the big, um, and all of the artwork inside of previous productions of shows. Just absolutely incredible. If you are any kind of a theatre history fan, you are going to just love spending time in this venue and just drinking in all of the theatre history that is being celebrated on the walls around you. Auditorium, very comfortable. My sight lines were fantastic. I've already told you about the amazing way that I managed to get a ticket. I did go to the gift shop beforehand as well, and they have a lot of really great stuff. Obviously, I got this frozen t-shirt. I'm skeptical about how well all of these little glittery bits are going to stay through a washing machine cycle, but we'll find out about that later. They also had the plus that you would expect. You know, they had Olaf toys, Sven, Anna and Elsa dolls. They had this really cute and very reasonably priced little toy theater, which I thought was really adorable because they had different scenes that you could put in a different character so you could like reenact the show. I almost wanted one and I'm very much not who that product is being aimed at, but I thought that was lovely. And hand in hand with that, there is a pre-show announcement to this show that welcomes everyone if it's their first time coming to the theater and something like, we hope that it's the start of a lifetime of love with the theater, something really beautiful that nearly made me cry. And I'm really glad they put that in. And it was put in there as part of a message of being like, we're so glad you're here. Please do not sing through the show, which I appreciate as an audience member. They also did have the famous frozen Diamante water bottle that's, I forget if it's 45 pounds or 55 pounds, but either way, as I understand it, the water out of it tastes the same. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, indisputably, this is a family show. This is a show for any child who has ever loved Frozen or any child who has the capacity to love Frozen, which as I understand it, is basically all children. It was really cute seeing so many children dressed up in princess dresses. It was cute seeing parents and children wearing matching princess dresses. That was really, really sweet. Daz and I did not dress up as Anna and Elsa. I tried to convince him. 
He wasn't into it. I mean, it was either gonna be that or Pantomime Sven. But at the same time, at no point during this show did I feel like, oh, this is something that's harder for me to enjoy because it's aimed at children. It doesn't feel specifically aimed at children. There are a couple of like, over the heads of children, adult level nods and winks, and like, the emotional depth of it all is very much what makes it just a full traditional show. It's not family entertainment, it's not children's entertainment, it is not aimed lower. So those are my thoughts on Frozen. I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon, which is great because we don't have that many shows that have the capacity to sell out a venue like Theatre Royal Drury Lane, which is so, so big. It needs a huge successful show. It needs to be a family show so that people are bringing children. It needs that kind of enormous appeal to sell that venue. And something deserves to, because it's a shame to see that theatre dark. It is such a beautiful theatre now they've redesigned it. I wish Frozen many, many more successful years there. And the show is really great. You know, it's very easy for me to pick holes in something that has been so celebrated. You're still getting, you're still getting a really lavish, really high production and really high quality night out musical on the West End. Occasionally it might feel slightly more like the best theme park show you've ever seen, but if you're any kind of a Disney fan, then this is also gonna be for you and you're gonna have no issues with this. If you have seen Frozen at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, which you probably have because I'm incredibly late to this party, let me know what you thought of the show down in the comments section. If you're gonna be seeing it soon, let me know about that as well. Also, if there are any other shows that you would like me to review here on my channel, let me know because it's possible I've been to them recently because I, I feel like I've been to every show in London this week and I need to record a bunch of reviews. Let me know which review you would like to see next on my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stager YouTube channel for plenty more content coming very soon about all your favorite Favorite shows. Also, if you want to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre, where you can gain access to exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>